We'll welcome there, uh, lady and gentlemen. And uh, this is our final session of the day. And we've saved the best for last. This is uh, Experiences with Embedding Nagios on Raspberry Pi. And uh, just so for you guys coming in, um, if you haven't been in this room with me, we're going to do a Q&A when we're done. Um, we've, it's worked best if you just, just raise your hand. If you've got a question, I'll run over there with the microphone because everything is being recorded. And we want to make sure we get both ends, the question and the answer, not just the answer. All right? So try and raise your hand, and I'll run over there with the microphone and get it to you. Without further ado, I'm going to hand the microphone over. Actually, he's got his own Come microphone, on. so you're good to go. Dave Williams. Well, thank you very much for that. Let's get started. Um, simple topic, you'd think. Putting Nagios on a pie. Uh, as in all good presentations, we'll do the agenda. I'm going to tell you what I'm going to tell you, and then I'm going to tell you it, and then I'm going to tell you what I've told you. And at that point, some of it might have stuck. So let's kick off. There'll be my ego slide. There's always one in every presentation, see how marvellous I am. Uh, some chat about the Raspberry Pi, for those who aren't familiar. Uh, I'll move that way. I'll move this way. A bit about the Raspberry Pi, and then what I've called a recipe, because it's a pie, uh, about building Nagios on the Raspberry Pi. Um, a kind of proof of concept building DNX. One of the things about the Raspberry Pi is obviously you've only got a little dinky little processor. But if you want to do big jobs, then you've got to have more than one of those. So my particular technique has been, let's just pile them, stack them high, sell them cheap, which is another message. And then I'm going to skate on thin ice whilst being on a tripwire and do a live demo with the Pi that's in the middle there, which I will tell you now has a very dodgy power supply. So let's all hope it works. Then it, the, the most interesting part of this presentation is really going to be about the future. What can you do with this thing? What might you want to do with this thing? What has been done with it so far? So you can get an idea of more or less anything. And for those of you who like stealing street furniture, traffic light, traffic cones, just the thing for you. Uh, OK, uh, my background, mainframe, Unix networking. Uh, I work for a French computer manufacturer, and you have no idea how much pleasure that brings to a man from the UK to work for the French. <laughs> but I try to overlook it. Um, the parent company is, uh, makes its own kit, uh, mainframes, high-performance computing, minis, and managed services, whatever. What do I do? Uh, system monitoring, where I've been. Uh, OpenView, obviously. Uh, NetView, OpenMaster used to be our product. Um, so these are all enterprise. These are these are the umbrella products that like take over big enterprises and cost big enterprises big money. Uh, and where did I kick off with Nagios, Netsate on AIX? And I was one of the first guys to port it. <sighs> it was just fun. Um, and that was one of one of life's. I'm going to get this in for the benefit of the serendipitous accidents. As much as I wanted a network monitoring system. I couldn't afford to remount OpenView. I had an AIX server sitting next to me. Job done. So let's get on to the Raspberry Pi. Um, for those of you who don't know about it, it's inside a little box there. It's a little credit card-sized computer. And its reason for being, or I said I work for a French company, a raison d'etre, is to actually educate children. It was the, the guy who's, who worked on this, uh, which is Eden Upton, were taking in graduates at Cambridge who seemed to be incapable of coding. They couldn't quite get a do for loop together. And this is just craziness. They're very good at doing Excel, and they could do a bit in VB, because that's just drag and drop. But and it, it became apparent that there seemed to be no way of teaching young children how to code. And one of the obstacles is, that if you've got a six, seven hundred pounds computer, the last thing you want to do is to give it to a child and say, do what you like with that. Yeah. Rewrite it, do anything, create stuff, blow it up. Oh, maybe not. And so they set forth to build a computer that was disposable, had enough body strength ability to be interesting so that the results of the child keying away would be interesting to them, would be motivational, but 
It didn't matter if they poured their coke all over it. And um, that's the Raspberry Pi. What does it look like? Uh, it looks like that. Everything you need for a computer. Uh, USB, well, if you want to put a keyboard or something on, that would be good. LAN connection, because you have to be somewhere. Audio, because you want to listen to things. Um, RCA video, because not everybody's got HDMI, which is the other main output. And then a RAM. Now, that rather attractive picture that shows that little square in the middle with the, with the GPU and the CPU. And unfortunately, that's a layer because underneath it is the memory. So it's actually the manufacturer, memory, <laughs> CPU soldered together. So you're not going to be upgrading this one very easily. Um, it's a great tool. But nice, powerful machine, really obvious. And the thing I like about it is in the left-hand corner, GPIO, general purpose I.O. At long last, we're back to the stages where I can stick a piece of wire on a PC and go, I can make that wire do stuff. Where are they? Raspberry Pis, bless them. Um, all over the place, it would seem. Uh, when you get a Pi, if you, you're invited to register your purchase, um, these are the people who have. So all over the world. Um, majority in the UK, 4,900. Scattered across the US of A, even down in Brazil, Chile, Argentina, they, they've all found their way around to these places. Uh, if you want to look at RAS track, you'll see it being updated. Right, my demo system, which I'm going to show you, um, is running flavors of Debian. So the one we're going to watch is obviously running Squeeze. And the next release will be. Wheezy. These are reasonable ports. The squeeze port works. Okay, it's a working system. I'm all very happy with it. It'll work better under Wheezy because Wheezy's been optimized for the floating point instruction set. So the kernel on this one will fly, basically. And there's a couple of other kernel drivers that have been put in that are quite interesting. Right now, we're playing on a pretty, pretty slow kernel. But it does the job. But it's not, that, it's not optimized, which is true. There are other kernels available. Obviously, you can put Fedora, if you're really that sad. Um, you can put an optimized version of Debian called Raspbian on, which is flies like a rocket, but has no real repositories for you to get decent software. And for those of us of a certain age and a certain origin, you can load RISCOS, which was the old operating system on the BBC Micro which was absolutely endemic in the UK and nowhere else. Right, this is the recipe. We're going to build ourselves an Agios server on a Raspberry Pi. How do we do that? Well, pretty much the way it tells you to do it in the documentation set. So your first port of call should be how it's done, which is not bad because most of it works, which is cool because it gives you something to start. So it's already there. This, for those who build Nagios, should be amazingly familiar. Apart from the odd thing, I think, why in God's name am I having been forced to install IPU ports? Well, and things like that. Aren't they there already? Well, the answer is no. This is a minimal operating system. It's this big. It doesn't have these things on it. So then we do the usual things. We trudge our way through, you add in users, creating everything, thinking it's all going to be lovely. Oh, whoops. So I want those pretty pictures. And I'm a man for pretty pictures. Let's not be wrong. Uh, I'll be leading GD Utils, which isn't an instruction set, so you have to go and find it and build it and install it. This is not a problem. It's just like when you get the slide set. If you sit in front of the slide set and follow the rules, at the end will come a working system, kind of. And then... Just take the nudge of source and compile it. There's nothing, there's nothing scientific about this. There's nothing um, mysterious or magical. Um, the config file correctly detects the processor type, makes the right optimization moves. 